WAF seminar online, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Professor Luis Caffarelli uh, from UT Austin, and he's going to talk about mm -hmm. regularities of the transmission problems. Yeah, so please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see here. It says uh, that. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, I have this, the note that the, that the Zoom is going to be recorded, continue, how do that I do in the, in the, ah, yeah, yeah, okay, there it is. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if I do it in the laptop or the iPad. Okay, very good. Uh, so I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about some work uh, I did with a, to, well, with a colleague and I have a graduate student of mine. Maria Soria is a uh, graduate uh, student, Pavustin is a mathematician. And um, so, so, so as the title goes there, it's regularity for C1 alpha uh, in interface transition problem. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to discuss a little bit in general. I think I have like a, six steps, one after the other. And so I go one step by step, uh, uh, <clears throat> explaining more and more, right? Uh, how, <coughs> how, how to prove this, uh, uh, <coughs> this regularity of, uh, and it's a sort of a sort of a bit strange type of uh, uh, regularity, right? So, um, let me start saying, although you may probably all know, right, that uh, transmission problems concern a situation where a medium changes behavior across a surface, right? Uh, um, so I think, let me point, point out that this is, let me see if I can, I can move it out of, because you are all covering me a little piece. No, no, I think it's enough. I, I know have enough. <laughs> so basically, okay. So transmission problems, right, concern a situation when there is a medium that at a cross some surface, right, uh, changes behavior. Mm -hmm. But uh, you don't have to confuse it with the free boundary problems, right? In the free boundary problems, uh, the surface where the change will take place, uh, it is. Uh, is part of the problem, okay? While <coughs> uh, um, uh, uh, well, in the transmission problem, right? You have uh, two different areas, right? Separated by some surface, and that surface is fixed, okay? Or it's non a priori, you say like that, right? Uh, and then. Uh, You know, one can find a very classic and sometimes even simple examples. You know, when I did, I, I, when I started prepare this, I said, well, you know, what, what uh, should I say about transmission, right? And then you go there and it's full of transmission problems, right? And so, for instance, there is one from 1820 that is, doesn't call it like that, maybe, right? But it is a problem where you have a a beam of light, right, crossing uh, your your uh, your trans trans transmission problem, right? There is a problem when you have this, uh, the, the, the a beam of light, and then when it ha ha hits this uh, plane, right, some of it goes back, and the other continues. So what you have is two uh, the regions, right, with different. Uh, uh, amount of line, each one of them, right? That is smooth in the inside. And then they, when it goes across it, then there is some sort of jump on the derivative of the, of the, of the, <coughs> the light, okay? Mathematically, I think one of the more or less mod modern uh, theorems we are due to Picone, right? Uh, uh, in 1954, right, uh, he was looking at problems concerning elasticity, right, and his work later uh, was uh, treated by Leon Father, uh, uh, who completed the theory, uh, uh, 
and then uh, capital H1 setting, okay? Uh, so, so Lyons give a higher dimensional uh, version of the, <coughs> of the previous problem, okay? This is a little story. Uh, and then uh, Schechter en uh, enlarged the theory to smooth uh, elliptic operators in non-divergence uh, equations, okay? So basically the, the theory uh, ex uh, expanded due to different applications. There is works of Elienic and some of the Russian mathematicians. There is a, a, <coughs> a series of our well-known names, right? That, that uh, uh, work on this problem, okay? Uh, uh, some, uh, you know, there is uh, an example, I think also you can think in sort of where the going, when a person runs to the, to the sea from the beach, right? We all know that, right? You write first a longer segment by the beach, right? And then a shorter one for the sea, right? And so this is a typical case where you have the two media, right? And you have this trans transmission a curve, right, from one to the other, that is uh, the natural one, the, the, the least uh, work one, okay? This is just, uh, uh, when, uh, if you start to look, as I said, there are a bunch of uh, different applications, right? Uh, <laughs> we are the equations is, in, in, in fact, there are applications where the equations, I'm going to talk about two Laplacian because it's the simplest things uh, to understand, right? But uh, there are, you can have in the medium, right? Uh, again, separated apart where the, the diffusion or the, <laughs> or the fluid is uh, uh, satisfies the Laplacian on the other, the fractional Laplacian or many comments. So you have two nice two, uh, uh, elliptic equations, right, of the type you prefer, right, and then they get together at some point, and that is the, <coughs> and then that is, you get this, this problem, right, so it can be flows, insulation, pricing, okay, so uh, it can be tempera tem temperatures, right, uh, you have a temperature one, uh, 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 in one of the domains here, the domains are these two ring, right? Outside you have zero and there you have in the middle, you have the this intermediate surface, which is a circle, okay? So, so okay, just like uh, I know a little bit what we are talking and then uh, let's uh, start with the theory, okay? So basically the theory, uh, we have two domains, these joints, let me see because uh, I'm getting blocked a little bit by uh, by you guys. <laughs> Let me see if I can. I, don't know, I have the corner is blocked a little bit, but it's okay. Well, it's okay. Let's see if we can do that. Let me see. Maybe we can move it a little bit to the left. Okay, here I am really borderline both sides. That's okay. It's, so, so we have two domains, uh, this joint adjacent, adjacent, right? Omega one and omega two with a common boundary gamma, okay? So we have uh, that uh, U1, D2 are this joint, but if you put them together, then you have uh, an, a larger uh, region omega, right? And a curve uh, gamma that separates the two parts. This is how can I make this is a little bit smaller or something like that? Let me try to, to reach it because you are uh, covering you are covering about uh, almost one inch. Okay, here uh, let me see here I'm better, I think. Okay, here I I, I have a seems like I have a better uh, view. Okay. So, uh, so we have this domain omega, right? Omega is nice, connects uh, everything, right? And then you have 
a curve gamma that separates omega in two pieces, omega one and omega two. So in omega one, you have a U1, in omega two, you have U2. Uh, in each one of their domains, they satisfy a nice equation that for me will just be the Laplacian equal to zero, right? And then when they get together, then that is the where the transmission, the tra trans transmission uh, takes place. In other words, we are, the two are together in this curve, and then we have to see what can we say, you know, the, the curve or a surface, right? You need, suppose we assume some uh, regularity on the surface, right? And then we have to impose a sort of a jump condition, angle condition, right? In other words, U1 and U2, when you put them together in omega, omega is uh, smooth, but uh, over this uh, transmission point, many times there is like an angle, right? In other words, there is a jump in the derivatives, okay? So basically, uh, it's like you have these two domains, these joints are adjacent, uh, and uh, um, or one, uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I see. Okay. Okay, here I think is this thing. So, and then you have your uh, um, uh, omega one, omega two, you have the union omega and gamma that separates them, okay? Uh, and if you take u equal u one plus u two, in other words, you do, yeah, I don't know if the notation is, the proper one, but you take a U, which is U1 in one side and U2 in the other, right? Uh, <laughs> then U covers the full of omega. That is that the separation between uh, omega one and omega two doesn't have gaps. You know, it is like a curve and then gets together, right? So basically you have a picture uh, like this, okay? Oops. A picture like this, right? Where you have uh, uh, omega omega one inside omega two, right? Uh, uh, omega two is uh, uh, u two is zero in the uh, uh, exterior boundary, and in the interior curve here gamma, right? The two u one and u two comes together, right? Complete the uh, the u, okay, and and then uh, the Laplacian of UI are equal to zero in the, each one in their domains, right? And U is a sort of a continuous across gamma, right? So this is basically the situation we have. In other words, uh, uh, if, if gamma and omega are C2 alpha, right? Gamma is the outer curve right and uh, u equal gamma gamma is the intermediate curve the curve that separates the one from the u2 right if they both of them we are uh, c to alpha and the boundary and the functions u1 and u2 were harmonic right then there's nothing to do this is everything is c to alpha l to alpha the standard classical regularity okay uh, so basically um, and the models that we were, we were, we were the start work about this uh, as in part as some sort of uh, fluid problems where you have two different media, right? And the flow uh, basically in each one of them changes. Uh, uh, I mean, it's harmonic, right? So it is the standard flow, stationary flow. And where there is the change from one media to the other, then the, there is a problem there with the. So uh, <clears throat> basically, that so says here that our models require though that the transmission interface have only C1 alpha regularity. So we, we look at some problems where you could have only C1 alpha regularity. And then we had to develop a new geometric arguments to show that the C1 alpha regularity of the use reach the, uh, the transmission boundary, okay? In other words, uh, <coughs> the, um, here we want to show the, yeah, that, that the 
that you can get in for G1 alpha what you had for G2 alpha. That was that the, that the, everything is C1 alpha. I mean, as you know, when you go down below the R, then you have problems in general, okay? So basically, uh, let me recapitulate this first discussion, right? So we have uh, these two U1, U2, right? The Laplacian of them is zero, right? Uh, and they have this uh, common, uh, <laughs> at, the, at, the, at, at, uh, at the boundary of the omega, the UT is zero, right? Remember that UT was in the outer ring, right? Uh, and, and on gamma, right? U is on gamma, right? Uh, uh, U is uh, uh, the two U's, U's uh, get together, right? They are the point three says U1 equal U2 on gamma, right? And four then is that u1 minus u2, if you compute the normal derivative in, let's say, the interior or the exterior, whatever you prefer, is some positive quantity, okay? In this case, should be in the, uh, 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 let me see, in this case, you to have it positive, the normal derivative, you have to be uh, outwards in gamma, right? So in gamma, in, the, in this the point uh, gamma, then the u1 has to go outwards and the u2 has to go inwards. So the two are with the right sign in some sense, okay? Um, uh, so, uh, so this is in some sense the, the, the translation, trans, uh, transla translation, translation, <laughs> translation, uh, <coughs> problem, right? As a Schechter propose it, you know, this really clearly well, this is a general purpose, okay? And so what I want to show is that, okay, we, uh, <coughs> we look at this, uh, at this, um, at this configuration with, um, um, with my collaborators, right? And we, uh, um, basically minus manage to show that the solutions uh, uh, were C1 alpha and the resolution was really fully C1 alpha crossing the, the transition area and everything, okay? So basically uh, it was a really, uh, it's not obvious, you know, it has a, it has a lot uh, of uh, math that we have to put there, right? And so basically I have organized this as, you know, the, the computation are very uh, uh, complex. So I'm more or less going to avoid it. I'm just going to say which one is the, uh, the more or less the different step and the more or less uh, uh, sort of give you an idea of what happens in which one of the, stop, of the steps, okay? So it's five steps, right? Uh, step one is what we discussed up to now, right? Uh, or uh, section one, and section two, then we prove existence, uniqueness, and basic regularity. So, so there is just some continuity on the use. So, uh, so this is like a very low starting thing, okay? Uh, then uh, second, the second, uh, uh, step right uh, 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 is to look at the transmission in transmission uh, interfaces right and what happens there a little bit right uh, uh, oops. <laughs> and then the transition four right uh, we look at the stability of the solutions, that is that the solutions, small perturbation don't change it much. And finally, in the section five uh, is the proof of theorem one. At the very beginning was theorem one, uh, that I will say what it is in a minute that says the existence and regularity, okay? But the, the sort of the tenuous theory that I, might, uh, that I want to show you will be in these steps, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> okay. So 
So we start stating uh, our main uh, final result. These are the ones that we will have uh, uh, prove at the end of the discussion, right? And was that, that there existed unique uh, classical solutions to the transmission problem, right? That was as Laplacian, Laplacian, and the jump in the middle, right? The jump will be we given the jump. I'll we'll talk a little bit more later. Is given so basically the 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 values of u in the inner curve is prescribed, and the outside curve is zero, and in between is uh, harmonic, right? And then <coughs> um, basically at the end of the day we have these two theorems, right? And maybe in some sense, the theorem one, two is the more complete, right? That says that, uh, <coughs> that um, uh, we have a point Y C one alpha boundary regularity, right? For the whole theorem in particular, for the jump in the, in the middle, right? The gamma be local and a C one alpha uh, graph. So the two, Things that come together, they will have form a C1. So the derivative of that, so the, 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 the two things coming together, there is a sort of a <coughs> regularity on the boundary, which is given by C alpha regularity of the first derivative in each side. Okay, so this point Y thing is in each side. So in each side, the function coming from outside reach the boundary, and the boundary is. C1 alpha, right? That doesn't mean that across is C1 alpha, right? It is C1 alpha, the curve and the side, okay? And for the other, the same. So it is like you forget of the other and you will have a solution that have a boundary, which is C1 alpha two, okay? For each one of them. And then you put them together and say, oh, well, by the way, these two C1 alpha curves are the same in the contact point, okay? So this is the meaning of C1 alpha regularity across the transition surface, okay? So, um, so here it is described a uh, term in uh, theorem one, two, so it's gamma B uh, locally uh, uh, C1 alpha, alpha graph, right? Uh, so this is the, this uh, uh, Y prime, psi of Y prime, right? It's just the, uh, <coughs> the, um, description of the of the gamma right so so it means like boundary c1 alpha for the for the um, for the u1 and u2 and then c1 alpha regularity going inwards okay that will be the final result so uh So, so basically the key tool is just a stability result based on the mean value property, okay? We transport the regularity from classical solutions to U. In other words, we were going to start with <coughs> solutions which are regular, really regular, right? C2 alpha, so something like that. That means that we can solve the problem, right? And then what the part which is more difficult, more delicate is to <laughs> take the limit and be able to show that the, uh, the regular solutions and the regular surfaces when we, mm, the surface inside the gamma, we will make it only C1 alpha, right? We still be able to <coughs> have C1 alpha for uh, the solutions for the use in each side, okay? And this is really no trivia, right? Because in general, when you have something like a C1 alpha boundary data, right? Then the solution going inwards is uh, is um, it's not uh, <coughs> regular at the, at the boundary. Okay, so here, um, so in this case, you know, C1 alpha boundaries and so on. Then you can prove that. Okay, <coughs> so so basically, this is the idea. We transfer. The regularity from classical solutions to U. Okay, more precisely, we compare U to a smooth approximation solution. Okay, so we we show that if the uh, flatness and oscillation of the uh, uh, integral uh, in, in, in 
intergrade, so your curve, right, is control then the dis, uh, distribution, uh, dis, distributional solutions of the non flat, uh, flat uh, problem will be close to a classical solution. Okay, so this is the first step. Okay, so. Uh, so we <coughs> we uh, uh, out that are uh, uh, let me see uh, properties develop in uh, uh, the construction and the, so we also you know so the, we will get, go to a point four two where we finally construct properly the the boundary the boundary surface, okay? So, well, okay, basically this is an idea of what will happen. So let me start with the, with the theorems, right? So uh, we start with the section one, okay? Uh, we'll sketch, I will sketch here the, uh, it, it, <laughs> ex ex existence, uh, uniqueness and regularity, right? Uh, but this existence uniqueness of regularity will be existence low regularity right uh, uh, and uniqueness okay so basically we start in this first step right we start by constructing or showing that the u right uh, is a weak solution i can construct for you a wheel u a weak solution right which is C of C zero uh, in omega bar, right? That means it's just a continuous derivative up to the boundary, right? <laughs> um, and um, is a weak solution if uh, for the, let me see, okay. If uh, in, uh, it's a weak solution if for a phi, if you test it against a phi in C zero infinity, we have that we can apply the integration by parts. So U Laplacian uh, phi differential of X is equal to uh, G phi uh, differential of HN minus one on the bound. Okay. So basically this is saying, right? Remember the Laplacian of U was uh, zero everywhere except on the edge, right? Where it was more for forming an angle, okay? And then this as well, okay, I can will, I can construct that, but all I can say about that construction, right? Is that uh, it is a solution in this sense, right? Integration by part, right? G is the Laplacian fundamental solution, okay? And so if you integrate by part, you get, uh, uh, <laughs> Laplacian of u phi equal to, and in the other one, right, you have <coughs> normal derivative of uh, u phi. So basically, then, uh, in other words, here, this, this is a weak way of saying u is harmonic at, uh, away from uh, away from the boundary and gamma, and on gamma. Uh, U, uh, Laplacian of U that I have integrated in the other side is equal to uh, this uh, function, uh, this function gamma, okay? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so, so basically this is the first uh, weak solution of the problem. I mean, uh, <laughs> so, uh, theorem 2-2, right, then, uh, is uh, yeah yeah let so let gamma uh, is three four so let gamma uh, be uh, Lipschitz little gamma and little g belong to L infinity then there exists a unique distributional solution of u in this uh, domain right in uh, omega bar right uh, continuous u is continuous in omega bar, okay? Uh, so ux then you can, then that means as I, as I was saying that ux, you can write it as the convolution of uh, G, <coughs> the fundamental solution times the G differential on Hn minus one. So this is the integral, right? The second is the integral 
on the curve, right? And then the other is the, uh, uh, <coughs> the boundary, the, the construct the U, okay? So G is the green function of uh, gamma. Mm -hmm. So basically this is a basic and really straightforward uh, first theorem, right? Um, uh, and we know here that uh, if U is uh, log Lipschitz, in other words, uh, Lipschitz known is like a, the Lipschitz, uh, the second, the first derivative is uh, like a log uh, condition, then U is C zero alpha, okay? And uh, U C zero alpha, right, uh, also implies a log lip condition for you. So, so it is equivalent one and the other, okay? So basically that at this step, this sort of a second step, we have this uh, weak solution, right? That uh, makes sense, okay? Now uh, we go to the uh, section three and in the section three, what we want to do is we want to do a, a smooth approximation, okay? So uh, <coughs> we uh, construct this, smooth approximation V. Mm -hmm. So we have, we take uh, <coughs> take a, a constant R bigger than zero and, uh, and a value A in R, right? And giving zero between alpha and gamma less than one, right? Let uh, uh, G will be in C0 alpha, right? <coughs> G be C0 alpha on the transfer, 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 transfer of R gamma, okay? And uh, F, uh, what is F okay, here? <coughs> and F in C0 gamma. Then, right? There exists a, a unique uh, solution V. V is the smooth function, right? That will approximate you in C0 infinity because it is uh, very smooth of uh, the ball BR minus the, <coughs> minus the, the, the curve, right? And, um, and uh, C zero gamma of the <coughs> of the ball BR, okay, to the flat transmission problem. So, so we have here a solution of the uh, sort of the flat transmission problem, right? We are uh, we are uh, <coughs> we have Laplacian of V equal G the area normal of H of uh, K minus one, okay, as we wanted, okay. <coughs> the trace in the R alpha, okay. So further, right, if we let V plus equal to V indicator function of the ball of radius R, right, uh, R alpha, right, plus or minus around the, the transition boundary, then V plus or mi plus minus, right, is, uh, in C one alpha of the uh, <coughs> of the um, yeah, okay. So oops, I don't know what is coming here. Yeah. Okay. So 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 up to now, then what do we have? We have a U, which is uh, <coughs> basically. Uh, not that regular as we want, right? But it was, uh, was in fact, it was not too regular, right? At the point, if you remember, right? Not yet. But now we want to show that it is very close to a nice approximation, nice function, right? That is a nice approximation, and therefore that it will be more in this, in this, uh, in the more regular area. Okay, so. <clears throat> so we have this uh, V plus or minus, right? Uh, so P in the, uh, in the, uh, in the times uh, the, the surface 
in the ball of radius uh, r plus or minus, right? So I'm looking at the v now at the origin, okay? And then uh, we have that the v plus minus, right? If we are uh, in the, in the um, ball of radius r alpha, right? Then uh, the norm of this v, right, uh, is smaller or equal than the uh, g, okay? The g was what we have in the, the bar. Okay, so basically, uh, now that we have this uh, approximation, then we go to four, and four is the stability results. So, so in some sense, four is the one that gives us uh, for the first time, the, uh, the approximation of uh, the function u to the, what we expect, the regularity we expect, okay? So uh, <coughs> stability results, right? Uh, so if, if the non-flat, uh, surface is close, okay? So it's close to flat, there's so, so uh, solution must also be uh, phi uh, zero alpha, some sort of non-degeneracy properties, okay? So basically what we are trying to prove is that when U is, when U is bound, when the points are boundary to this transition curve, right? When it's coming to very close to the transition curves, then we start to get some the regularity we are missing, right? Remember, we have that the uh, U, right, was uh, <laughs> C1 was, was uh, the, um, the transition curve, right? Uh, have C, C1 alpha, right? And so basically now, and U was like, uh, so, so now we want to show that U or now is T1 alpha up to that surface, okay? So inside U is a harmonic, so it's very regular, but it may deteriorate when you go to the transition curve, okay? Now we say now, we said, okay, now we have uh, this, uh, <coughs> now we have this, um, at, at this curve now, we want to show then that, that the, uh, if the curve was C1 alpha, right, then U is C1 alpha up to there, okay? In other words, uh, this is the, uh, so, 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 so this is the stability result. If this little T, I don't know why that, uh, uh, not flat function, right? This is the non-flat function, right? Uh, that is the, the borderline. Remember, we have this curve, and this is a non flat uh, uh, boundary curve, is close. This is, is uh, close, right? Let me see. Okay. To flat, then uh, solutions must also be uh, close, some sort of non degeneracy property, okay? So the, the geometric approach is uh, to stability is the following, right? <laughs> we fix epsilon bigger than zero, and you let uh, <coughs> omega, right? This remember omega epsilon, right? Would be the x belonging to omega, uh, such that the distance between x and the boundary of omega, remember omega is the whole domain, right, is epsilon. So basically here we are saying, we have our domain, we smooth a little bit the boundary, we have, we take a, 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 a smooth a little bit the, the boundary of the bigger boundary of omega, right? Here is, a, D is the distance to the real omega. So this is far away from the transition problem, okay? Uh, we have, uh, and then we take on the transition problem, then, so now, now is when the math really comes, right? So in the transition problem, right, uh, <laughs> we, we say, what well, there exists a epsilon strip around the transition problem. That was, remember, the omega was equal to the omega one 
and the omega two. The omega one was the support of u one, the omega two, the support of u two, and they got together, okay? So omega j is omega one and omega two, depending what you are talking about, right? So you have the epsilon strip around the boundary, right? And then we said, okay, now we are going to take a solution, right? That is a, a, a pre-solution that is omega epsilon, which is close to the omega on the boundary of omega, right? The two boundaries are the same. And also that the boundaries, oops. You don't see, but my thing <laughs> time goes, goes black. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so uh, but uh, we are saying, uh, let me see here, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, we are here, right? And, and, and there, and um, so we have the gamma epsilon close to the full gamma, and then we have also down here, yeah, we count the boundary gamma sub alpha. In other words, <coughs> the gamma. So, so we have a strips, a, a strip that separates the gamma one and the gamma two, right? And so, uh, the have basically that the, these are close to the boundary strips. I see this, this little line uh, uh, that I put there, right, with the two arrows says that this uh, function uh, omega, <laughs> omega epsilon, right, it is close to the, go, uh, to the gamma epsilon and uh, the interior gamma one and gamma two, okay? So it's basically like a skeleton, a smooth skeleton of our problem, okay? Uh, and now and we take gamma epsilon, then uh, the uh, neighborhood of the gamma curve, right? The gamma curve is, is the one that was separating the, the omega one from omega two, okay? And so basically there is a strip all over for, for all of the curves you were looking, we have this strip, okay? Uh, and so basically now, then we said, okay, now that we have in the strips, let's see what happens with the averages, right? In other words, let's take the U and average it, okay, all over, okay? And so in the parts which is uh, harmonic, in the part where in the, if the, the neighborhood is harmonic, right, nothing has changed because it, so, so basically, <clears throat> that was always average, right, of the of the other side, right? And, but here you are averaging the U. And if you are in the part where U is harmonic, in the neighborhood is harmonic, then you can average and you get the old uh, U, okay? So basically what you have with this uh, argument, right, is we are reducing you see is like all you almost everywhere except in the parts where the all you are making angles, right? So, so it's in the outside boundary and in the place where the boundaries come together, okay? Um, so uh, now let's go. So now we want to look at the properties of the averages, okay? Uh, so basically uh, what can we say, right? We can say, <clears throat> if beta epsilon intersection gamma is uh, empty, right? In other words, if, if uh, you don't touch the gammas, right? Then the U in the center of this, uh, uh, <coughs> in the center of a point, is the uh, U is harmonic. In other words, what it says is the U epsilon and U are the same when you are uh, epsilon away from the parts where the function uh, has uh, angles, okay? So, so this is a uh, trivial, right? Uh, <clears throat> then U epsilon converges to U uniformly in compact subsets of omega, okay? Uh, <clears throat> um, omega was all over, so, uh, and if G belongs to, L of gamma, right? Then G epsilon is a continuous function of the gamma epsilon, okay? 
In other words, if uh, <laughs> because outside is a, is a smooth, okay? So gamma epsilon is just a convolution of gamma, which is an infinity. So it is continuous in gamma, is uh, continuous in gamma epsilon, okay? So uh, gamma was a curve inside. So when you go out of there, you get C. Mm -hmm. So uh, <coughs> look, here we have where D is, the epsilon is the average of mu. Okay. <coughs> okay. So basically now we are much better than before. We have basically that uh, you can be approximated by a smooth uh, uh, average. Okay. And um, so basically now, uh, as you see, gamma epsilon, right, is the average of u, right, because this is the uh, epsilon, right, it was the green function, the gamma epsilon, okay, so the <laughs> gamma epsilon at, at, in the part where you are inside, the is harmonic, okay. So now we are in the uh, theorem four, right, and the theorem four then is the one that basically Sh almost shows the existence, okay, of the solution. Okay, so uh, uh, theorem uh, four four, so right says uh, let's again let's get uh, zero less than epsilon. This is going to be the average thing, right? Theta less than one half and zero less than sigma and gamma and less than one. Okay, so sigma and gamma where uh, these are going to be some parameters. Okay. Yeah. So suppose that this is given, okay, and let gamma, right, be the set of a uh, y prime such that psi of y prime equal to y prime belongs to D1, okay? So, uh, so we are see is the Lipschitz uh, uh, judge, okay? So assume that uh, gamma is. Uh, <laughs> the gamma is theta epsilon flat in D1 in the sense that gamma is contained in the set of uh, uh, X belonging to D1 uh, and such that the uh, absolute value of X is less than S zero epsilon. So basically this is saying, right, that uh, <laughs> this is saying uh, that um, at zero uh, equal to epsilon, right? So this is the interior, right? So that's where. <coughs> so, so, uh, so it is a distance epsilon from the center, okay? So basically, <coughs> so uh, suppose that gamma, this gamma is contained, right, in the neighborhood of the origin, okay? And then gamma, so you will move the origin to where you want, but we is to analyze what happens with gamma point by point. And so I said, well, I take coordinates, right? Such that gamma is in, <coughs> in this uh, neighborhood of the paper, the, the, arc, the angle, the position we are looking at it, right? And so gamma is also epsilon horizontal, right? In the one, that means that we are taking uh, we are changing coordinates or taking a tangent direction, right? Vertical tangent direction, okay? <clears throat> so basically this is saying gamma is also epsilon horizontal in D1, okay? <coughs> that means that gamma uh, is uh, gamma of X, right? Um, dot, uh, 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 and dot uh, here I lost the quantity, right? Is uh, equal to uh, one plus uh, gradient prime of five, right? Square and uh, smaller than one. Okay, so that means let me see if here. Oops, let me see if here we can see better what that means, right? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. It's a stack. Okay, okay. Uh, so basically, uh, 
Okay, so basically what he's saying is that uh, given X, uh, X belonging to gamma, right, which was the, the curve we are considering, there was a new, right, uh, 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 that is the uh, upward point way uh, that has, the, that has uh, up white point wise normal to gamma, okay? In other words, we are looking at the gamma and we're making the gamma uh, uh, <coughs> horizontal, right? And we, <coughs> so we are assuming that the gamma is horizontal, right? And the direction in each point and epsilon belonging to gamma uh, and such that it has a new of x, right? Which is upwards direction. So basically what is the position here, the picture here, we have the gamma and we are taking a point and move the coordinates such that it becomes horizontal, okay? <coughs> so I take a point, we make it horizontal, okay? And so we have uh, in the normal derivative nu, right? Uh, uh, point, uh, that points upwards, okay? So basically that same, we are basically putting an horizontal position. Okay, and then they says in that case, there is a constant of n such that for any u belonging to the ball of radius gamma, zero gamma around uh, gamma belonging to L infinity satisfies that uh, <coughs> Laplacian of we have the regular uh, function V, right? The regularized function V such that the Laplacian of V is equal to G differential of H to the n minus one, okay? And g uh, is uh, minus one is a small, okay? So basically v has a universe convergence to the boundary data, okay? So as you said here, we have u minus v is smaller or equal than <coughs> this small quantity, okay? So basically what this theorem says, so let me put it here, right? So basically says, you take an epsilon, which is a small number, and a theta, which is a small number. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you take a theta, which is a, a small number, and, and theta, which is less than one half, right? And you take uh, this uh, delta, right? Uh, bigger than zero, uh, delta and gamma, and less than one, okay? So we have the bounded quantities. Uh, that are given and you have your gamma, your gamma, the large gamma, right? Which is from the beginning, the points where things change, uh, <coughs> the, change the things change uh, behavior, okay? So, so, so you have a Y prime, gamma Y prime, right? Where Y prime belongs to the ball of radius uh, one, right? Where pi is a, uh, Lipschitz function, okay? So we assume that gamma is <coughs> flat in V1, right? In the sense that <coughs> gamma uh, is a container uh, in the set of points X, right? Such that Xn is very small. So basically what this first argument is saying, so is that the geometry such that gamma is basically almost uh, horizontal, right? It's contained in an horizontal curve, let's want to put it like that, okay? Because <coughs> the, the gamma is in a point X such that the Xn, right, is less than theta epsilon, okay? So, so if you take a, 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 a N to be the vertical direction, then gamma is sort of flat, okay? So gamma is sort of class there, right? I mean, remember, <laughs> and also uh, is, so it says, is also epsilon horizontal in V1. This is what it's saying, this one, this, this uh, and description. So in V1 is epsilon uh, horizontal, right? Uh, because this is the flat. Remember that we, the theorem says that uh, if you are flat, there was this flatness, right? That the theorem says, if the thing is flat, you have the regularity, right? And so basically, uh, here we have the flat, right? And <clears throat> so for each point we have we have this gamma, and for each point you have gamma, which is an up point, 
uh, with, with point, right? So that means that gamma is flat, okay? And then the, that says that uh, <clears throat> there is a constant such that for any u in C of zero gamma, right, of the R, and G in L, uh, L infinity of gamma, we have that the Laplacian of V, right? <coughs> <laughs> the Laplacian of V is uh, V, remember, is the function, smooth fun function that we want to be smooth and close to U, right? So basically, we are saying the Laplacian of the function V, which we expect it to be close to U, satisfies, right, what this was basically the, what has to be the uh, Laplacian of U along the curve. I mean, was Laplacian of U sit outside. But here we are the curve, close to the curves, right? So we have close to the curve, U is close to the curve, and V takes the, the, the I mean, this part flat of the curve, V is, uh, remember that the curve is C1 alpha, C1 C, uh, alpha. So the curve is rather regular. Mm -hmm. And so here we have that the curve is rather regular, and we have that uh, U, <laughs> it has uh, the standard expected quantities, right? G and infinity. And then <laughs> we, we prove that the Laplacian of V satisfies on the curve, right? On the flatness of the curve, basically the same, uh, that's what we are building here, right? That has the same uh, uh, right-hand side as U, okay? So basically then from here, we want to deduce then that U uh, is close to V, which is a smooth, okay? And so basically we have this, uh, this geometry and also that satisfies that U minus V is a smaller or equal than the, this uh, small constants, right? Because they were all less than a constant, okay? So, <clears throat> <clears throat> and so finally, then we can uh, prove after all this uh, uh, sort of uh, approximations, right? We can prove the uh, theorem one, two. You remember at the beginning, right? Which is the pointwise C1 alpha boundary irregularity of, of U, okay? So basically we have the U, we have the boundary, the boundary, uh, in, in, interior boundary, which is smooth, right? And we have proven that if we have this uh, approximation V, which is between U and the boundary in some sense, or it is a variation of U, it's a U that this is a vaporization of U, which becomes uh, smooth as we, provide, uh, as we approximate the jump size set, right? And so we reach the the proof of the theorem one, two, right? Says that we have point Y C one alpha boundary regularity, okay, in the function, in the smooth uh, boundary, okay? And so basically the proof is basically putting together what we already have. We have gamma, right? And we have proven that the curve, so the curve gamma, right, is Y prime phi of Y prime, right? Because it is a smooth curve, it was a smooth curve from the beginning, right? So uh, uh, <coughs> gamma is Y prime psi of Y prime, right? Where the Y prime is the horizontal line, right? And where uh, the psi of uh, is uh, C1 alpha for some zero less than alpha less than one, okay? So basically, uh, remember that psi is the function of the flat thing, okay? So we have the flat thing, right, and the y, okay? Assume that zero less than gamma, okay? So let then be you a distributional solution uh, on the uh, transmission uh, problem. In other words, uh, <coughs> on, on HN minus on, on the on the HN minus one surface, right? Then the Laplacian of U is like GD of HN minus one. So where G is L infinity, right? And G is bigger or equal than infinity and G is zero alpha. And so then there are linear polynomials, right? A alpha plus B, right? And G, right? Such that 
u1, right, minus the polynomial, right? So we have the, the polynomial now that approximates the, the u at the bound, what should be the u at the boundary, right? We have a polynomial, uh, this polynomial minus the, the p, uh, phi, right? Uh, is bounded by <coughs> d times uh, x to the one plus alpha, okay? Uh, U two minus uh, omega one is uh, d x to the one plus alpha two. So <clears throat> the U one and the U two, right? Are, um, you know, the U one is from one side, remember, and the U two is from the other side, right? And so U one p one is the one that goes in one direction, and q is the one that goes in the other direction, right? In other words, here. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, so, so basically then we have that, uh, <coughs> sorry, and then we have that uh, U1 minus, that is coming from one side, minus the, the linear fun function P, right? Is a further close to zero, like one plus alpha. And you two coming from the <laughs> opposite direction, right? Also, right, approaches uh, <coughs> minus q uh, goes uh, to zero when uh, when x goes to zero goes to zero like one plus alpha. Okay, and this is this is true for any uh, x that belongs to <coughs> to uh, gamma. Uh, minus intersection B1 half and X in gamma two intersection uh, B1 half. So coming from one side and coming from the other, they have these two regularities. Okay, I wanted to put from the beginning, right? That is that the functions, the two functions U became to an angle, right? in a smooth fashion. In other words, that the function u and the function two, we are, and they are equal along the angle, right? They are curved, which is equal along the angle, but and coming coming from uh, one side or the other, they are tangentially C1 alpha. Mm -hmm. So that means that along this curve, everything is C1 alpha. The, 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 the coming from one side and the other is made, it's not the same, right? In other words, <laughs> one has a, a p of x <laughs> has a, a ax plus b and q of x is cx plus b okay so when x goes to zero they all go together to the point but with different slopes <clears throat> and okay and this is all i could uh, Thanks a lot, Luis. Okay, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Thanks a lot. Uh, so are there any questions or concerns for Luis? Uh, please uh, unmute yourself and uh, you know, uh, and raise your questions. Okay, well. Sure, I've got a question. Okay. So in the, in the parabolic setting, you have an interface which is uh, C one alpha parabolic. Do you expect some analogous results to? C one alpha parabolic. Uh, well, the parabolic is C one alpha. Uh, right. So the interface may uh, be changing in time. No. Yeah. No. No, no, but it's like uh, if you have a function, like a, a heat equation, right? You have a, a C11 in space, C1 or Lipschitz in space. So, so let's say that the, there is a balance there. Uh, I think that uh, I would say that some sort of continuity it should have, because usually, you know, the I think usually that is more like the elliptic part is usually worse than the parabola, than the, the space, the time, right? I would say, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> sort of vaguely, I have the impression from the heat equation, whenever you do things which are more or less continuous, that 
that the that the Laplacian has more like a tendency to have problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and in fact, here is let me see because here we are getting uh, Helder results, right? Whereas we are getting C one alpha. So you have a C one alpha for the space. Well, second derivative, let's see, C1 alpha for the space. Uh, second derivatives are bad. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, no, so, yeah, no, because the second derivatives, uh, the second derivatives are bad. So C1 alpha, no matter where you come from, you are, right? Mm. So C1 alpha, where it comes from, so this is second derivatives. That this is approaching the first derivative in time will be bad. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So so it looks like at, at first glance. I mean, at first glance, it is uh, it is uh, it could be bad, mm -hmm. but it is a you know it is a mixed problem. A mixed problem is a mixed problem. You have to see right to say well okay. Uh, what happens, you know, like, because what, what do you want to do for a few problems like that? Maybe you want to, to move the boundary, right? Mm -hmm. So suppose you say, uh, I have this, this solution originally, right? And then uh, for time t equal to zero, let's say something like that. Uh, yeah, suppose you, suppose you put it uh, t, suppose you, Suppose you say I construct this function because here we put all uh, a harmonic outside, but you know doesn't have to be solved, right? So you say suppose I construct, I I build, uh, I start with something that has a smooth uh, to start with. I have uh, yeah, we have uh, like C alpha C one alpha. Uh, space, yeah. Hmm. Uh, uh, because of the, so, so the problem is in the curve, right? When you start, you have harmonic function all over, right? The problem is uh, in the curve, that is the alpha. That is uh, uh, so basically in the in the shape of the curve, I would say. So uh, so if you start to so suppose you say okay, I start the boundary, and then you have this U T over here. Yeah. I don't know. At first glance, I would say it looks bad, <laughs> but I, I don't know if uh, uh, because it's just this curve, right? And so I don't know if one says, okay, I'm going to go for the heat equation, right? Every, originally, you have uh, Laplacian equal to zero, right? Then I put a smooth. There is all a smooth, right? And so. Uh, so there, everything is smooth, right? And along the curves, right? Along the curves, things are bad, right? But it's just a curve. And maybe, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is unsinkable that you say, then I will just get this curve uh, shrinking time or something like that. Anybody has a serious opposition for that? Or, uh, or oh, is it obvious that this thing is going to be bad, or, or you can build something? Uh, you can build something. We are, uh, yeah, because uh, maybe you. Okay, so let's say that we don't care for an. We don't want. Uh, we don't want an equation for you on the on the curve. All you want for you on the curve is that it remains, uh, it has a singularity, which is not terribly, you know, which is a, 
let's say, <coughs> uh, yeah, you have, suppose you have this curve, right? Suppose you have this curve. Okay, your first question will be the following. We'd say, suppose I keep the values of u along the curve, right? And solve the heat equation inside. Then that that will be okay. I mean, you, you know, because you are the data on the boundary of one, which is Kelder continued, right? In fact, it's better, it's E1 alpha, and place as being the boundary of the other two, right? And so you go in time constant, right? And so the heat equation there, that will be more than okay. <laughs> because it's a boundary value, right? So if you, so if the heat equation at the boundary is uh, C one alpha. It's okay. You have some solution inside. So, so if you just keep it constant there, I think there will be no problem in having a solution. It's not then too too interesting, right? But then the question, then the second question one may ask is, is okay. But then maybe you can bring some influence directly on this curve without happening from through the middle, right? By saying, uh, okay, but then the move, okay, the boundary, well, we have to decide what you, the boundary is zero, right? And then, so you want to start putting there something that, uh, so you start with the given interior ring, right? That you have now computed and you want to move the ring, right? Uh, solving uh, the heat equation. I mean, if you, if you keep the ring like it is, right? And lift it, then you have a heat equation. Okay, I mean, near the boundary, this is not going to be too good because the ring is not C11, neither the function, but it's gonna be something. Now, maybe the interesting thing is how when how to start with that and have a smoothing way for the ring, right? For the boundary and saying, okay, well, and my ring originally is like this, right? It's C1 alpha, right? Uh, and then I'm going to make it converge uh, to, uh, yeah, maybe you can flatten the ring upon some level, let's say, right? Uh, uh, using the, 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 I mean, if you just do it for itself, it's also not fun. But, but if you uh, uh, make the, the, the equation, for instance, the, the, the equation in between, right, to decide how the ring is going to move in the middle, right, how it's going to, to evaluate in the middle, then you probably can get something I guess the interesting thing would be if you get something that has a T derivative as smooth, right? In other words, that inside there is some uh, smoothness because you because you are surrounded by this uh, operator, by this Laplace equations, right? From both sides, right? Then there is some way by to, to, to smooth the ring inside, in other words. Mm. You can, go the, you can do the heat outside, right? That's the right. Idea. Why do I put in this? What do I put there that the whole thing makes sense as a as an application of something, right? Or uh, uh, yes, maybe you can round it up a little bit and let it go and see. Just I don't know, <laughs> but I think it it may be a nice uh, a nice problem. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Okay. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, anyone else that, that, that who has questions for uh, Louis? Uh, uh, can I ask you maybe one? Hello, okay, Louis. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so in, in the case when you have uh, two Laplacians on, on both sides, uh, mm -hmm. So th this also becomes, uh, I mean, essentially a problem in potential theory, right? So you you essentially have mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, potential. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So um, 
so what, what 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 if you take so, so so two questions? What if you take not the uh, Laplacian but change to to let's say uh, uh, maybe other operator, maybe fully nonlinear, for instance, uh, with this fork? And the second one, uh, uh, I think, uh, related to potential theory, maybe. So if this function g is not c alpha, let's say c uh, I don't know k minus one alpha. And the surface is also, let's say, a gamma is, is CK K alpha. Mm -hmm. So uh, would you expect U to be CK alpha across, and uh, not across, up to the boundary? Uh, let me see. We... You are talking so the gamma is the one, uh, the G, or the let's G. say smooth gamma is smooth, or That's the, but this is the curve on the bump on the inside, inside, talking? yeah, inside, yeah. So you have the curve on the inside, yes. And what equation do you want to do across? Oh, let's say this G, uh, G is uh, CK minus, no, let's say Laplacian, so G is CK minus one, and then uh, the solution CK minus one alpha, so then the solution would be. CK alpha. CK minus one alpha. Uh, I think this is one would would expect for potentials. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let let me see again. You have G. Okay. So. Let, let me see again, G. This is the quadrant zero, is in L infinity of gamma, right? <coughs> Just uh, then doesn't see, well, you can go in, let's see. The issue is you want, you go both sides at the same time, right? That's the, <coughs> that I think is the only, if not, it's just, okay. One can say, okay, I forget the inside, right? And then you are asking what happens if you have a G, which is <coughs> smooth along the curve, right? So you are just the ring, right? And then inside you will say, okay, I put the G and it's smooth around the ring. Then, in, okay, let's suppose that that is not terribly awful, right? So suppose that this is okay, then, in between, right, what do you want to have? Do you want to have a harmonic or do you want to have? The harmonic on both sides. Okay, so you have the harmonic on both sides and you leave the center, you leave the ring or you, mm -hmm. yeah, and but yeah, that's more, but then what, what were you asking? Because this more or less what we were discussing, right? I move the ring. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, so, so. Oh, but you were uh, saying what you put in the interior instead of harmonic. Uh, yeah, that was that was the, the first question. So, yes. Uh, okay, yes. okay uh, again, so, the first question. So if instead of uh, harmonic, we change it to, to another operator so that let's say uh, potential theory doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. If it is a fractional of the Laplacian or some things like that, I think that would be more or less the same. We'll have less regularity, like depends, you know, like uh, you can go with a fractional Laplacian, you still can go regular if you don't cross the, <coughs> you, you don't cross the, um, <coughs> the, the problem, uh, you know, because you have here, we have that uh, the Laplacian here, where the Laplacian here will be minus alpha, right? Uh, the Laplacian here. <laughs> okay, again, let's see. We have the function inside. And the Laplacian outside, Laplacian equal to zero side, right? Put a Laplacian. Uh, 
Now you have outside in the middle, you have C. What was I am? I am a little bit confused. Uh, in the interior, right? What is that we have? When I started, we have uh, the boundary data and yeah, and I have harmonic on, on sides, right? Harmonic on the strips, right? So you have the two harmonics and the curve in between. Okay, and then you said, okay, uh, I change the harmonic by something else. Uh, I think the I think the whole thing is going to bring if if worse, right? Is going to bring the bad of the change. Uh, in the sense that the that the behavior right the boundary behavior right because here we have uh, yeah the boundary behavior how does the boundary behavior go inside you have <laughs> well, in many of the applications, the boundary inside is like, a, yeah, it's harmonic. Or you can, <clears throat> so, so you will have the harmonic function, right? And you uh, are uh, building from both sides. And I want to get the regularity. I don't, I don't know at first glance, <laughs> I have to, <laughs> I don't know, I, I surround them. Yeah, I, I, I think maybe it's safe to say that what you said that, you know, maybe for the uh, for the fractional Laplacian it's okay, but for the fully nonlinear ones, it's, it's, it's widely open, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. fractional Laplacian, you know, because there is some room, right? If you have, you, uh, C one alpha. And say okay, I can reduce the alpha, right? In other words, you can sustain some reducing of the alpha or something like that. You know, so you have room if you change the order of of the of the equation, but keep it uh, in such that the the trace has the right uh, behavior. But more general is. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, sorry. Well, no, I, I think again, I mean, maybe the fall semester is open, so. Oh, I, yeah, well, it's yeah. still the cold, it's the cold spring, not the cold. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what, 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 what I mean, I mean work hard. Can, can visit you and, you know, work it out for the fully non in your case, you know, in the uh, fall. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for the question. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, and I, I think it, uh, it is great that we have a lot of discussions after Louis' talk, and I think it's uh, it's a good time to um, to end the seminar. And you know, again, I think that uh, uh, thanks a lot for your your talk. I think it it was great. I, I learned a lot, and uh, thanks for everyone for the participations. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, well, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Hopefully, we're gonna get back to in person in the fall. <laughs> okay.